Now let's build a super simple spacecraft really quick. Let's start with a cube and then make it smooth by adding a subdivision surface right here and holding Alt or Option will make it a child of the subdivision surface. Hitting NB, we can see the wireframe. Under the Object tab here, we can increase the subdivisions just to smooth it out. Then once we're happy with that, we can hit C to make that editable. Now for the design of this, this is just going to be a really kind of smooth oblong shape, kind of like the movie Arrival. So I'm just going to switch to the side view, go to point mode, hit zero for a rectangular selection, grab this corner, and under soft selection over here, we can turn that on, maybe increase this a little bit. That way we get some nice kind of fluid shape movement. But you can see it's really pointy at the end. So instead of linear, let's turn it to bell. And I'll just pull this down, maybe twist it a bit. And then hitting control A, I'll just select all these and maybe flatten it out a bit. Just move it up so it's kind of centered. And it looks kind of sad from this angle. Let's thin it up quite a bit. And if you want, you can hit shift C, type smooth and get this little smooth brush. And then you can smooth out any of the chunky pieces. And if you want it to be symmetrical, you can just go to symmetry. And we want symmetry over the x-axis, so we turn on that. Now you can see the little dot on the opposite side. And then middle mouse dragging, you can increase or decrease the intensity and the scale of the brush. Now we can just kind of smooth the middle section out. And that's fine, it's just a really simple little shape, but we're going to destroy it here pretty soon, so it's okay if it's more simple. I'll hit NA to go back to Shaded View. Now to add some thickness to this, let's click the Subdivision Surface button and go to Cloth Surface. And make sure this is a child of that. Now hitting NG, we can see the wireframe. Now with the Cloth Surface selected, let's turn Subdivisions to 0. And for thickness, Let's decrease that and so we get some inner thickness. So it kind of shrinks this down just to give us a nice shell here. Now I'll middle click this, right click, and connect and delete. That way we just have one object. And one thing we need to make sure is to check the normals to make sure they're facing in the correct direction. So under options, we can turn on polygon normals. Then let's turn on the polygon mode and then just select all. So you see on the outside they're facing out and I'll hit NB to go to kind of flat shaded view. And I'll turn off soft selection here. Now if we go on the inside, you can see these are also facing out, which is incorrect. So if we double click this, it should select just this part, not over here. Then we can hit UR and reverse those normals. So now the inside is facing in and the outside is facing out. That way we have a proper hollow object. Now to break this apart, let's go up to the MoGraph button and add a Veroni fracture. And holding Alter Option, we'll set up this structure. And right away you can see we have nice chunky shapes here. In the fracture object, if you go under Object, you can offset the fragments so you can kind of see the inside of them. And right now you can see there's a lot of overlapping. You see all that flicker inside. So if we turn on hollow object, now it understands that that inside geometry isn't more volume, but it's actually the edge of that area. So now we have a proper hollow object. So we can turn this offset fragment back to zero. Now if we hit play, nothing happens because nothing is physics based yet. So in the Veroni fracture object, let's right click and then under simulation, add a rigid body. Now if we hit play, everything just falls down. That's because there's gravity in the scene. So hitting control D under dynamics and general, we can turn gravity to zero since we're in space. So now if we hit play, you can see that there's a slight shift. Things are just moving apart for some reason. In the tag here, under collision, you can see there's this size increment. If we increase this, that'll make 
the kind of collision shell that's created larger. So it gets blown apart. So if we go negative 0.1, that just decreases the size of the collision data just a little bit. So now we don't get any shifting. Now just to kind of play around with this, you can drop in a cube, move it off to the side, and then right click under simulation, add a collider body. Now, as the name suggests, this will now collide with other rigid bodies. So if we hit play, and scoot it, you can see we can just blow that apart. And if you leave it there, I think if we reset, it's just barely touching that, and so it just collides with that automatically. And if you want more time, you can increase this number to maybe 250, just to give you a little bit more time to let the simulation run. So you can see how quickly that just kind of breaks apart. So we're going to make this implode and not explode. So we want to add an attractor to the inside of this so it'll pull things inward. So under Simulate, Forces, Attractor, we'll add that. And to make sure this has an effect, we have to go to this tag here under Force. And let's change this to Include and just drag this in. That way we know the rigid body is using this attractor. Now you can see when we hit Play, it's kind of subtle what's happening. It's pulling everything. And then once one piece gets really close to the center, it accelerates quite a lot. So in the attractor, let's turn down this top speed limit to 200 instead of 200,000. That way it's not so violent when it gets towards the center. Because we want this ship to look larger, let's add a lot more chunks. So in the fracture object, under the point generator, we can change this from 20 to maybe 75. And then right now everything is uniform, as you can see here, and under this distribution type. If we change this to any of the other options, we get a little bit more kind of concentration of points. So if we change this to normal, you can see it kind of shifts things in directions. If you point it all the way, it's totally concentrated here. And then if you go all the way up, it's pretty uniform at that point. Inverse normal kind of does the same thing. And I think under inverse normal, there's some nice separation where the points get a little bit more concentration. And there can be larger chunks here in the middle. So now when we play this, it still kind of just all holds together because these pieces are pretty thick. And so it takes a while before any of them break apart. So one way we can shrink these down is by adding a plane effector. So in the MoGraph button, we'll add a plane effector. And you can see the whole model jumped up. That's because under parameter, this position is set to positive 100. We can turn that off. And all we want to change is the scale. And we do want it to be uniform. So you can see as we pull this down, the pieces shrink down. So if we start at zero, key this here, and then go maybe forward in time up to around 30 frames, we can decrease this just slightly to maybe negative 0.1 and hit a key there. And if you don't see anything happening, that's probably because this is a simulation and so you can't necessarily control these as it's paused forward in time. So now when you hit play, you see over the first second they kind of shrink down a little bit and then break apart a little bit better. And eventually I want all the pieces to disappear, so I'll go to maybe 90 frames and turn this to negative 1. That way they'll be at a zero scale. And I think that happens a little too quickly, so we can take this key down here and just drag it forward. So that's working pretty well. We get a little bit of a weird collision there that flings all these pieces out, which isn't super ideal. So in the attractor, we can turn down this speed limit a little bit more. Let's try 100. And that does a pretty good job at 
reducing that explosion. Let's even try 10 centimeters just to see if that's any better. So now that's too slow, so maybe try 50. So now we get a nice crumple, none of the pieces are flinging out. And right now it is really uniform, especially at the beginning. In the plane effector, we could add a falloff noise. So in the falloff tab, in this tab here, we can add a random field. So what this is doing is adding a random field to this plane effector. So certain pieces are being affected less. So you can see right now some of the pieces don't scale down at all, or they only sc scale down a little bit. If we turn up this inner offset, that will increase this field to 100% all over, so all the pieces will still scale all the way to zero. And to better visualize this, if you go to View Settings and turn on View Plane Preview, you can see the randomness visualized. So now if we go back to remapping, go to Contour Mode and go to Curve, we can adjust the intensity of this. So we can crank that. So you can kind of see that better. So now when we play, some of the pieces scale down and some of the pieces don't. And we want most of them to scale down pretty quickly, so we want a lot of this to still be white, but maybe we can leave a little bit less white to start. And then near the end, we could have the rest of them scale all the way down. So maybe around 130, we can key this spline, then drag the slider, and then increase all this. So everything's at 100%. So you can see that adjusting there. Now let's hide this preview and hit play. So you get this really nice collapse where the pieces are shrinking and hitting each other and eventually collapsing into nothing. And the beauty of the setup is it's super easy to change. If we want more pieces, you can go back into the Veroni Fracture and then just increase this point amount. Then you just hit play again and it'll run the simulation. The only thing to keep in mind is that you are adding a lot more geometry the higher these numbers are. So to check this really quick, we can just middle click this and then right click and go to connect objects. But you don't want to delete because you want to keep the original. So that just makes this duplicate. And you can see it's still split up. So if we go to mode, project info, and look at this, we have 18,000 polygons. So getting pretty high. The memory is 1.66 megabytes, so it's still manageable. I wouldn't want to go much higher than this. If we actually delete all these extra weight tags and all these selection tags, and even that normal tag, that because we have this Fong tag here. Now let's check the project info again. Now we're down to 1.11 megabytes, so deleting those tags actually saved a lot of space. So we actually might be able to use this much geometry, so I'll delete that. And we can stick with, I guess I have around 200 points. So now pressing play, we get this really nice crunch down into nothing. So up next we're going to take a look at how to bake this down and get it ready for Spark.